So, jetzt aber sind wir auf der Bühne auch. So, now we are back, we are ready on the stage. Please take your seat. I hope you at home, you took a coffee in this break and then we would like to start with this journey into the future. In the future, we're traveling and vacations will be in the center of attention, will be key. So we will have two, three uh, two uh, key uh, speeches, key, key speakers here um, um, this morning. And let's start now. We are already in the middle of uh, uh, this topic. We have uh, uh, to now take this chance, the opportunity now uh, to talk about traveling. We are back now. We are up and away. Let's go again. And uh, Seba, Mr. Seba already said it. Um, the topic of sustainability, uh, so sustainable tourism, a balance between economic, uh, social and uh, business aspects and tourist aspects need to be uh, created and implemented. Also the social economic um, satisfaction figures are important and the uh, federal, regional um, tourism strategies are in progress, so, so a lot is going on here. We're looking forward to uh, some topics, so a, a philosoph philosophical um, approach in our next, in our first presentation, the tourism between euphoria and responsibility. Uh, Konrad Paul Lissmann is a philosopher and he is professor at the university and he is a public of uh, cultural um, topics and tourist topics, and he will be the one to open our ATB. Let's uh, give a, a um, strong applause and let's welcome together Professor Konrad Paul Lissmann. Dear ladies and gentlemen, so I would like to speak uh, freely without standing uh, close to the microphone. I feel more comfortable. So the tourism between euphoria and responsibility, up and away. Uh, this is the topic, the title I have chosen for this presentation. This is what we want. We want to go up and away when we are taking a vacation, when we're going on holidays. And uh, we are trying to uh, leave, leave something behind us and go to a different place, change our environment, um, feel comfortable in a different culture, in a different city with different people, and dive into a different culture. Tourism, and we don't have to forget about it, um, do arrives and has its origins from the French word tour. So it is the round trip, so to say, a, a round trip that is taking you from one uh, destination to the next, from one uh, site to the next, and then you're back where you started off. And ladies and gentlemen, tourism is uh, uh, something that is moving, is changing you and is um, realizing a change, but we are, but the tourist is always coming back. And the, so that is uh, what makes the difference. Uh, the tourist is different because of this, uh, a normal a person who is looking uh, or a migrant is doing something different. He's looking for a different way of living, for a different way of existing in, an, in another country or in another place. And this um, is the difference between a tourist or a migrant, uh, because the migrant or an immigrant needs to leave 
uh, his or her country uh, to look for a better world, uh, life somewhere else and doesn't want to maybe doesn't want to go back to his home country because um, he had to flee and the tourist uh, is a different uh, subject. Is uh, a tourist is a, a person uh, who's a guest somewhere else. He is uh, looking for other places and then returning back to his or her home country. And here we are not talking about the perspective of. Um, uh, the accommodations or uh, the uh, or traveling is a way or the tourist is someone who is uh, visiting a place but he will not stay he will stay for maybe a weekend maybe a week maybe four weeks maximum at maximum but then he will leave again and this is a specific uh, way of encountering each other encountering people meeting place uh, seeing places cities and also accommodations uh, and and this is an encounter between those who offer accommodations, who offer something in this city and the tourist who is uh, going to a certain place for a certain period of time. And this is a relaxing moment because, uh, and this is a good, a, a, a positive moment to know that someone is coming to visit you and will not stay, will return back. This is a very, um, something that uh, we uh, can be positive about and we can we are glad then if they come back after maybe six months and then of course after a certain time return back so it's a uh, transitory uh, thing traveling and not something that is lasting so of course we talk about it as something being part of us. It is part of our um, life. Uh, we always traveled. Human beings always moved from one place to the other. We always moved around. Uh, we as Homo sapiens, uh, um, we all know that 100,000 years ago, uh, people m moved from uh, Central Africa to different places and made our existence possible here. But this is a different way of uh, movement uh, because they were looking for a new life in a different continent and not and they did not leave because they were curious, uh, because they wanted to look for a relaxation. and. Uh, if we talk about tourism, we do not uh, have to forget that the origins of this modern uh, um, way of tourism is different. If we talk about the past, uh, I talk uh, about 200 years ago, so, uh, people traveling uh, were traveling for a certain reason. They were traveling because they did business. They wanted to uh, do trade. So it was a tra the, the reason was to do trade and they were trading uh, for example, something that was produced in India was then found in Great Britain five, six thousand years ago. So trade relations were always a driving engine for traveling. And then, of course, uh, being curious, uh, finding out what others do, what others have, and what can I also, or how can I benefit from those uh, from things that others do. And then uh, the early uh, the forms of uh, uh, traveling were um, those who traveled because uh, of uh, some uh, uh, war that they sent soldiers to uh, to do some some espionage and my aunt for example uh, did only one one journey in her life 
and this was connected uh, to different reasons. But this tourism uh, that we have today, this has to do with a modern industrial world, with a modern industrial life, and um, developed because of that in the late 19th century when um, we experience that the industrial life or work is something that is also a stress or we, and we need to have some relaxation. And the idea of a vacation of holidays was uh, born in the 19th century and then implemented in the 20th century. And this is important because uh, there is a uh, direct uh, connection between leisure time organization and traveling and the way our uh, world of working is, is structured. Uh, and the change in tourism has to do with the change in the labor market in our work life, uh, our leisure time um, ideas, concepts, and this have changed, so we have to get away from the old model that was uh, that existed after the Second World War in the late 70s. It, that was an idea of tourism that was decisive for many years in Austria, and when where we said that we are working for 90 percent of our life and then 10 percent of our time is dedicated to holidays and we in this 10 percent we have everything that is making our life to be worthwhile and so uh, this was a, an unequal uh, relationship so the term uh, holidays or vacation, uh, you have uh, bilingual uh, screens outside and the wonderful ho country um, vacation, country holidays. So it is uh, uh, in English. So and in German, the word Urlaub, holidays, um, comes from ancient times so where this the soldiers or um, uh, lean men were uh, then given some time to dedicate to leisure and holidays the English term holidays is different so the holy days it is uh, it comes from holy days and in the early age of industrialization the only few days where people were free um, were the holy days so the free the uh, bank holidays and so uh, people in the middle ages had uh, depending on uh, their the region they had more than 100 days uh, ho holy days so they had lots of holidays so uh, the few uh, bank holidays we still have would not be enough then so we it is uh, really re has been reduced now we are just having only a part of uh, that uh, of this uh, uh, holy day still left so and then in the middle ages in the central europe uh, was seen as a time that interrupted uh, work time, but the holidays referred always to uh, how we were um, integrated in working processes. We had laws establishing um, the right on holidays. Uh, in Germany, for example, it is still said that holidays are dedicated to relaxation, first of all, in order to give the uh, people the chance again to come back to work uh, relaxed and full of energy. This is one moment. So holiday as uh, relaxation, as regeneration time, as a source of uh, power where we get and generate power again. 
and uh, this is one thing but as since we see the holidays as an interruption of our work life uh, some of our attitudes and developed in a different way and they are complementary to work life. So those things that we do in, in our work life, we do also during the holidays. We don't want to see as much as possible, be efficient as far as possible, see and visit as many places as possible, uh, climb up as many mountains as possible, uh, do as many kilometers as possible in a day. So do uh, be as efficient as possible also during our holidays. So this is the idea also that is complementary to the one of our work life. And our this is what our employees also uh, I don't know if this is what the employers expect from us, but uh, then there is also another way of thinking of holidays or think holidays, uh, especially important for a holiday destination in Austria. Uh, holidays as an utopia um, doing especially things that or doing first or mainly things that you normally don't do during your normal life, during your private life, or at least not in this time, in the, uh, this extent. So look for a more contemplative uh, way or another relationship to nature. Look uh, to another relationship to other human beings. Holidays is a time where you satisfy other needs. Uh, t having more time, the need to see to um, enjoy culture. Holidays are the time where you visit museums, where you go to theaters, and things that you normally can't do during your normal life uh, when you work. So this is another way uh, uh, to look uh, or to see holidays. And holidays also is a time where you take care of yourself. So experience yourself, a self-experience, a self-recognition. Um, uh, this is something new and becomes more decisive um, nowadays. And I uh, watched the videos outside, which were impressive, this impressive landscapes of Austria. And another word on the relationship of uh, human beings to nature, we don't need to forget that the discovery of nature as a refugium, as a place of relaxation, a place of adventure, that is not something we're longing for. Uh, this is something very new, very modern. Because until the 18th century, nature was something wild, something we had to control, something dangerous. And until the 18th century, no one would have ever thought that Alps are something beautiful, that the Alps are something beautiful. The Alps were an obstacle uh, when you wanted to reach Italy. Uh, the Alps were uh, disgusting. They were a place that are uh, were hard to overcome. So the beautiful side of these mountains were not um, seen in those days. And now this has changed. And not only because life in the cities has become something so utopic. There is um, pollution, air pollution, CO2 emissions, cities are allowed, uh, um, there is the pollution due to industries. Uh, so the cities uh, at the beginning, how uh, did they look like at the beginning of the industrialization? And now, now we are seeing this the nature as a refugium, as something where we uh, look for relaxation. So clear water, springs, 
the lakes, all the untouched nature, all these aspects play a role nowadays. And especially when we talk about the positioning uh, of Austria as a green destination, these things and aspects will become crucial. But what does it mean to protect nature as a resource and a uh, source of power for relaxation? Because the other side of the coin would be that tourism could be opened only by industrializing it and creating mechanisms um, of technical accessibility. So. Therefore, we should or must think of what it means to be up and away, to dive into the nature, to enter into nature without um, encountering our, uh, te our technologies, our um, industrialized uh, everyday life. So uh, to make nature uh, be experienced and possible again, this is something that we, uh, should be crucial. So uh, one more thing uh, concerning uh, the green destination and also as green destination. And maybe uh, one aspect should be further discussed as well. We're talking or we like talking about sustainability, sustainable tourism, and we're talking about environmentally friendly, CO2 neutral forms of um, traffic, of moving mobility. But the reality, as we all know, looks different. Uh, one example, one year ago, an Austrian mathematician won a golden medal in uh, uh, biking. And this was really great. This was sensational. And many thought this could become uh, one of the most famous and popular um, uh, disciplines in tourism, mountain biking. Mountain biking could be one thing that we could offer in Austria and we could uh, commercialize well um, in Austria. But what happened? Nothing. Three days ago, I read that the Austrian tour, uh, cycling tour, was something exceptional because two cyclists were not able uh, to 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 uh, pay for their financial expenses and i read two days ago that officially um, uh, they're uh, or not officially um supported um car meeting in uh, Carinthia is uh, still going on. So um, leisure, le leisure time um, activities uh, that would be environmentally friendly are still not supported enough. They're still not marketed enough. And we still have non-environmentally friendly events that are in uh, still uh, in the focus. So in reality, we should create a basis, a foundation on uh, these environmentally friendly activities and, uh, and should not only use these uh, uh, terms to uh, just to for marketing reasons, but we should implement things. Um, and we can see that this is not the case yet, so we should uh, uh, start doing that. Thanks a lot for your attention. Thanks a lot, Conrad Paul Lissmann.